grace and peace. Good morning and welcome as we are gathered together, both in the sanctuary and those who are joining online. We're, we're gathered in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. In fact, it is God who gathers us, not just by our choice, our volition, our will, but God calls us and calls us by name and calls us to come. God, in fact, who is communal in his very nature, relational in his character, the Father, Son, and Spirit, calls us into community, into relationship with each other, and of course, with God. In fact, when we remember that Christian community is founded on the community of the Godhead, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, we realize that the way of God is the way of love. And we encounter God's love as an outpouring of the shared mutual love and affection between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And it is our shared affection, mutual love and affection as brothers and sisters in Christ that is the church's testimony to a world in need. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. God the Father poured out his love for us in Jesus Christ, his Son, and invites us by his Spirit to know him and to make him known. This morning we're going to read from Psalm 103 as a way of shaping our encounter, narrating our journey in the presence of God in worship. As you are able, let me invite you to stand and we'll read this responsively. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The psalmist reminds us that in blessing God, we also receive God's blessing. So let's bless his name together as we sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets till a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory till a cradle in the continues in Psalm 103, reminding us of the character and activity of God. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Confident that God is abounding in love, we bring our honest confession and prayer to him. Let's pray together. Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father, we are a people with short memories who easily forget your benefits. We need to be reminded of your redemptive work that you have done for us and that you call us to. And so we ask your forgiveness. 
we bless you in worship, we praise you, but of course at times we, we fail to reach out to others. We fail to extend compassion. We behave with a, with a strong sense of being entitled. We're often quick to anger and we put limits on just how much we commit ourselves to caring for others. We ask your forgiveness. Remind us too of your faithfulness to forgive and restore and that you have called us to the way of forgiveness and restoration, of reconciliation that begins with Jesus who gave his life on our behalf, restoring us to relationship with you and paving the way for us to be restored in relationship with one another. Create in us clean hearts and renew our spirits. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. As you have been seated in this sort of humbled posture, I'm going to invite you to stand, embracing the confidence and even boldness in God's presence because of his grace and his forgiveness, which we celebrate. The psalmist continues, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. So far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. In Jesus Christ, our transgressions have been removed. We have been forgiven and received the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. It's a gift that we receive, but also one that we share. So we take this opportunity to do that. Those who are in the sanctuary, you're welcome to wave peace signs, thumbs up as you greet each other and pass the peace of Christ. And of course, those who are online, you're welcome to open up your microphones as you pass the peace of Christ and greet one another. Peace of Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ.
Even what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for our good. You turn it for our good and for your glory. And even in the valley, you are faithful. You're working for our good. You're working for our The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul, and all God's people said, amen. Please be seated. Friends, uh, if you have your scripture with you, please turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verses 12 to 15. Deuteronomy chapter 26, reading from verse 12. When you have finished setting aside a tenth of all your produce in the third year, the year of tithe, you shall give it to the Levite, the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, so that they may eat in your towns and be satisfied. Then say to the Lord your God, I have removed from my house the sacred portion and have given it to the Levite, the alien, the fatherless, and the widow, according to all you commanded. I have not turned aside from your commands, nor have I forgotten any of them. I have not eaten any of the sacred portion while I was in mourning, nor have I removed any of it while I was unclean, nor have I offered any of it to the dead. I have obeyed the Lord my God. I have done everything you commanded me. Look down from heaven, your holy dwelling place, and bless your people Israel and the land you have given us as you promised on oath to our forefathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. This is God's word for us uh, this morning. Uh, let's pray as we uh, continue to hear for God's word uh, this morning. God of light and life, we turn to your word for guidance and inspiration week after week. Send your Holy Spirit to move in and among us this day. As we listen to the scriptures read and interpreted, help us to hear your challenge and your promise and to respond with our commitment to follow Jesus, your living word. Amen. You know, um, all of us you know, live in a house or apartment buildings or condominiums, all of us here have shelter. And we are often conscious of our homes, and maybe some of you have done renovation, and we think about the washroom. Uh, that's a big thing for people. Uh, when you renovate, probably kitchen probably takes a number one spot. 
right? The countertop, the cabinetry, uh, what kind of fridge you're going to have, you know, ovens and so forth. Because a lot of our time, let's face it, takes place in the kitchen. And uh, they even joke around that the way to the heart of a man is through his stomach, right? And uh, I'm sure that's the case for also many ladies out there too. Uh, let's face it, we enjoy eating. But how many times do you think about the foundation of your house, right? We don't think about that often until there's a leak. But unless you have the foundation, there is no kitchen. Unless you have a foundation, there is no bedroom, there is no washroom. Foundation is so fundamental. It's basic, fundamental, but it's something that we don't think very often because often it's already shaped and it's already in place before we move in. How about our life itself? What is the foundation upon which you are built? Do you ever think about the things that you're aware of, your consciousness, your thought, how you think, how you feel? Where is the foundation of all that? You know, in many ways, all the great Western books, if you will, if you want to think about it, what is that book that gets connected to all the other stories written in the Western world? Some people say it's Shakespeare. Some people say it's Milton. Uh, that all those books that was written by just few authors in many ways branches off and the subjects that they touch and the words that they've spoken, the phrases that are written, it gets repeated again uh, and gets connected to the other authors who come after them. Can we say possibly that few of those Western authors and philosophers and the writings that have had so much impact in the life of our Western world, where do you think they found the inspiration and that source. Scripture. Scripture. God says, Blessed is the one who does not walk and step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditate on his law day and night. You know, we have choice to content like nobody has ever had in the past history. At the click of a button, of a swipe, so many books, so many songs, so many movies, so many shows, so many things to just binge watch and immerse yourself to have your mind, your consciousness guided for that time period. You notice when one starts walking with the people that are wicked, you allow the people that you are walking with to lead your consciousness and your thought and your steps. When one becomes comfortable with such people, they now stand with them. Not only have they walked with them, but they stand in the thoughts of wicked. And in many ways, wicked in the scriptures are thoughts that are contradictory and contrary to that, the ways of God. Righteousness often does not mean you're perfect in your ethics and morality. But righteousness is at least that you have a relationship with God, that you have a right relationship with God, that we are grateful for God as central to our life and foundational. And when we err, we ask for forgiveness, we apologize. But God is that plumb line, that standard to which we measure ourselves and to be corrected and to be formed. For those of you who might not be familiar with the plumb line, is a plumb line is like a weight uh, with, with a string. And so when you're building a building, and you're building up the wall, it's easy for it to kind of stray a little bit out of a line. But when you have a plumb line with the weight at the bottom, the string is very straight, 
And to that, you measure and you start stacking and you start building so that your building is going up straight. In the same way, the people that are introduced here are, that are wicked, sinners, they're crooked in their ways. They're not the kind of people and their advices which you want to build your life upon. You want to make sure that if you're building a foundation and you're building a life, you want it to go up straight, that it may endure. So what does the psalmist say? Instead of sitting in the company of these mockers and becoming comfortable with their ways and their thoughts and their words, aha, uh -huh. but blessed is the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Such a person is like a tree planted by streams of water, yielding fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Meditating, it means you are chewing on the Word of God. It's like a cow, I believe, has like four stomachs. It's kind of disgusting, but they chew, they regurgitate, they chew, swallow, regurgitate, and they chew. And the picture word is like that. We meditate on it. And sometimes when we're kids, we drink God's word like milk, it says. Crave pure milk, spiritual food. But when we become older, we put our childish ways aside, and we start learning to chew on meat. And some of God's words are like meat. We got to chew on it, meditate on it, think about it. Uh, and, and, and there comes a time where ah, we get to the heart of the matter and the realizations come. Sometimes it comes quick. Sometimes it comes as an encouragement. Sometimes it comes as a correction. Sometimes it comes as a warning. Sometimes it comes as joy. Sometimes it comes as sadness in a good way, that wounds for a little bit, but it heals. But it is central, foundational of a life well lived. I have yet to meet any Christian saints whose life has been well lived, a life that people appreciate and respect in the church that did not walk closely with God's word. There are a lot of people who think that they are self-made man or self-made woman. That is laughable. I mean, aren't they speaking a language that's already in existence? Did they not go to school and learn the mathematics and sciences and philosophies that have already been taught and have been collected and have been handed down to people? There are no self-made men or women. It is not in the definition of who we are as people that are dependent for our existence. There is nobody but God who exists absolutely. All of us exist relatively in relation to something else. That is foundational what it means to be a creation. There is a fundamental difference between a creator and creation. God does not need to depend on you and me to exist. That's why he is, I am that I am. He will be what he will be. He is the Alpha and the Omega. There is no one who can exist absolutely and definitely by himself only. That is God. All other beings exist in relation whether as son, for me, of Samuel Choi and Susan Choi, someone who's born in Korea, a, signi a place, and then I moved to Canada. I have to relate myself to something or someone in order to define who I am. A wise person defines and anchors themselves on something that is not moving. Someone who defines himself absolutely in the God who is perfect and absolute. In so doing, becomes a valuable life. As I say, you are what you eat, but better yet, even more important is, you are who you worship. 
and who you worship will have a significance in who you are, not only for this lifetime, but for all eternity to come. So on that note, Deuteronomy chapter 26, what's, got, what's that got to do with all these things? You see, as the Israelites are now about to enter into the promised land, they are becoming a people. They are becoming a nation. And just as we have Charter of Rights foundational as Canada being Canada, Israelites are given also a charter, but we call that the commandments. God gives them the law, His ways, His words. Is God not only present with them, but God gives them the words. And the words that are given here today are liturgy. That every 30 years in the year of the tithe, these are the words that they are to say as they make offerings to the Lord. They participate. These words are given to them so that they can say it out loud. You know, um, sometimes uh, when I'm a little bit lazy, I cook foods like lamyon, uh, or maybe uh, for those of you who must, are not familiar with it, like, you know, macaroni and cheese. Probably not considered the, the healthiest food, but they're convenient. But when I'm about to eat and I pray, God, thank you for this, uh, please make me strong and healthy, I have a hard time sometimes saying that when I'm eating certain kind of foods. Right? It bothers my conscience because, yeah, sure, God can do all things. But I don't think lamion is going to make me strong and healthy. Right? At least not the packaged ones that I buy. They're just convenient. But imagine these words God gives you as foundational and fundamental to who you are. And as you worship, hear these words. I, it says, I have removed from my house the sacred portion and have given it to the Levites, the aliens, the fatherless, and the widows. It's got to bother their conscience if they have not done it. But as they do so, think of the sacred, that, that they have not. I've removed from my house the sacred portion. I've given it to the Levite, meaning God has blessed them. And by giving, you recognize where all your blessings have come from. So in many ways, offering for us as people of God, it's not so much us giving back to God. It's just recognizing that we have received from God. We come into this world naked and we will leave empty-handed. So whatever that's been given, it's just recognizing that God's given to us. And so when we're giving our offering to the Lord, more mature way of thinking is not so much we're giving to the Lord. It's just verifying and confirming we have received all these things. But as they do so, the sacred portion is something that they also give to the Levite. Now the Levites, they did not have any land that was given to them. They were to concern themselves with the things of worship, which was at the heart of what this nation was all about. A life of worship to God, saying, God, you are worthy of my service and my attention. That was at the heart of the consciousness of this nation, that God was at the heart of it. And so the Levites are given this kind of respect. It's... It's a respect that's given not only because of the person, but what that office represents. And, and so when you treat pastors and ministers a certain way, I'll be the first to admit I, I am a weak person. I'm a fallen being. I don't believe I'm the smartest person at Bridalwood or the holiest person at Bridalwood. But I do respect the office of being your minister. Pray for me, because I fall short every day. But I hope you will respect the office of the minister, not because who I am, but what that office represents. Right? And, and, and so it's a burden. It's a privilege, but it's also a burden. Ask any minister, and they'll tell you that it is a privilege, but it is a holy burden. 
So we need your prayer. But what's also awesome about this offering is God saying, be mindful of the alien, the fatherless, and the widow. Who are aliens? I suppose we might say in Canada, immigrants, refugees, people who do not have a home. But for one reason or another, they have wandered, they have moved from their home, and they have not come under the wing, the refuge of God of Israel. And the people are to treat them as such, that they've come under the care and the wing of the God of Israel, and that they are to treat them as such. The fatherless, the widow. These are all people who can easily be exploited in society. But maybe putting them to attention, God is also reminding the Israelites that weren't you once an alien? Weren't you once slaves in the land of Egypt? And maybe for us, we too also had times where we wandered and we did not know the rest of the Lord. As we became slaves, captives, of sin and brokenness of our lives and of our society, that God was mindful of us. When we did not know God as our Heavenly Father, when we did not know God as our husband, as the church is its bride, when we did not know God, where He looked upon us as the apple of His eye, He was mindful. And so these descriptions of these people are not just people that we are to pity, but in many ways, that's who we are like before God. So we live sort of in the past and also in the present. And the same way, the people that are in need right now, they live in the present, but they also live in the future of hope of what God can do for the people. So timelines become very blurry uh, in God, because God is eternal. And according to all you commanded, I have not turned aside from your commands, nor have I forgotten any of them. And God's words, in many ways, is not always confession of all that we have kept, but it's a roadmap. It's a confessional that, God, that's how I want to live. God, continue to shape me. I am a person that is in working progress. I might not be there, but I want to get there. But I suppose for us as people who are privileged enough to live post-Jesus, we can say, God, I have fallen short, but I'm so thankful you have credited me with the righteousness of, of Jesus Christ who has fulfilled all this. When Israel was disobedient, when Israel was stiff-necked, that you give us the gift of Jesus Christ who has done it all. And so now you see us and count us as people that are righteous because of Jesus Christ. That is the good news. And if this was a football game, that's a point where it might be a good time for us to cheer. Later on, it says, I have obeyed the, the Lord my God. I have done everything you commanded me. Look down from heaven, your holy dwelling place, and bless your people Israel and the land you have given us as promised on oath to your forefathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. That's their heart's desire to fulfill God's commands, to do his will. And do we not pray in the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? As we look at our world, it's a noisy place. Still in 2022, there's conflict that's happening in Ukraine that many of us are praying about and about concerned about. For all the technological advances that we have made, why is there still so much conflict? It seems people's heart have not changed very much desire for power, desire for greed, insecurities. It, it, it's still broken, it's still there. 
still there. God's word is so true even today. But I think it's amazing in verse 15, it says, look down from heaven, your holy dwelling place, and bless your people, Israel. The prayer is not just only for one person. It is a blessing of an entire nation, the land you've given us as you promised on your oath to your forefathers. It's the land that we're dwelling that's been given to us by God. We are not here by chance. But the place where we are, we, we are to seek the blessing of it. We are to seek the blessing of Bridalwood community, this city, this province, this nation, the place where God has given us. We as people of God are to live with a heart that's large enough, a heart with a room where we seek the blessing not only for ourselves, but the place where God has put us. And by the way, this oath to our forefathers, God's kept that. This promise that God made with Abraham, he's kept it. You know, um, I don't know if you're aware, it's amazing, even in Genesis chapter 18, this famous chapter uh, where Abraham pleads for Sodom, I don't know if you caught that, but in chapter 18, verse 19, it says, for I have chosen him. God says that he has chosen Abraham. And it says, so that, meaning God chose Abraham for a reason. And what Abraham is to do is that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. God didn't just choose Abraham arbitrarily. He did not bless him so that Abraham could just go to Club Med and kick back and enjoy the high life. But here in this world, while we're journeying through it, there is a mission, and for even for Abraham, that he is to direct his children, his household after him, to keep the ways of the Lord by doing what is right and just. That in our broken world, that there would be a stream of people, a community, a nation, that lives according to the ways of God that people may experience and see the goodness of God in a way that life is lived out. That you and I have been given, not only ministers, but all of us as people of God, to be shaped by God's foundation of his words and his truth, God himself, so that we may live as a witness and be a blessing just as God had blessed Abraham and he's made Abraham into a blessing, he's doing the same thing with his children. He's blessing us so that we may be a blessing. God's called Israel to live and to be taught and to live that out. And throughout the book of Deuteronomy, over and over and over again, God calls the Israelites to speak about it, talk about it, and to teach and to prepare the next generation that they may live according to God's perfect words. Friends, we have been blessed that we have been given a GPS, what I call God positioning system, his words, his words that are true, himself to be our compass to guide us in our world. And so look to his words. Look to his stories as teaching moments. Take the principles in which God has taught them and apply to your life. I don't know about you, just a story I want to share before come come to it. And, you know, sometimes I think about our world where when God's will is not being done, God, how do you work in that? And I think about the story where God wanted to be the king of Israel. But do you remember Israel? They reject God and they want to be just like other country. And God says to Samuel, Samuel, it's not you that they're rejecting. They're rejecting me. But the funny thing about God is actually he gives him a king. Even though it's not his will and King Saul becomes king of Israel. He was tall, he was handsome, 
kind of person that people like. But God still works with them. And I often think about that story and meditate and chew upon it when I come across difficult moments in my life where I'm facing a situation, organizations, where decisions are made where I feel like that's not God's will. What do I do? My friends, I, I pray for you and for your household and for all your generations to come. May you meditate on it. And as God made, calls Israel to make his word, God himself the foundation of their life. As you continue to do that, may your life, may your spiritual influence continue to grow, that you may give God much glory, and may there be many teaching moments in your life and your family where you may encounter the goodness of God, that you may be blessed by his presence and his word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of your presence. Thank you for rescuing us, the Israelites, from the land of slavery. And you call people who are not a people to be your people. You have formed them and shaped them after your heart that they may do your bidding. And even when they fail, even when we fail, you do not give up. So Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. But Lord, we ask now that you would empower each and every one of us with your Holy Spirit, that we would have the heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. And the understanding that can only come from you so that we may live as people that are wise, people offering the life of the gospel in this darkened and in a broken world. So bless your people that we may be a blessing unto you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As you are able, let me invite you to stand. As God has gathered us, so too he sends us out to be his witnesses of the love, of the blessing that we have received, and so we may be a blessing to others. Let's sing together as we go, Love divine, all loves excelling. Yeah.
And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.